the most substantial progress in Ukraine's counteroffensive against Russian soldiers looks to have been accomplished. The Western-backed soldiers eventually broke through the invaders' positions along the front line after two months of being repelled. The progress near Robotine, in the region of Zoporizhia, implies Ukrainian forces would be able to go well into territory controlled by Russia. Up to 80 tanks and armoured vehicles were used in the strikes, which resulted in the destruction of formerly unassailable Russian defences. According to reports, Ukrainian leadership had previously kept back their best soldiers and equipment before using them. President Volodymyr Zelensky's soldiers successfully retook the town of Staromyorsky on the southern front, marking a significant victory. Zelensky uploaded a video of his troops celebrating the liberation of the region. The Staromyorsky settlement has been freed thanks to the work of the 35th Brigade and the Airy Territorial Defense Unit. The soldier in the video said, Glory to Ukraine. The caption for Zelensky's footage of at least eight troops hoisting the Ukrainian flag read, Our South. Our men. Praise be to Ukraine. On Thursday, the tyrant of Russia, Vladimir Putin, said that the attacks in the south of his country had gotten worse. Zelensky has conceded that the counteroffensive's progress has been slower than hoped, but yesterday night he praised very good results from the front without giving any other information. In his weekly video message on Wednesday, he noted that his team's performance in the front of the pitch was excellent. Salute to them. Details will be provided. Hannah Malia, the Deputy Minister of Defense of Ukraine, also said that the settlement had been taken by the Ukrainian army. Steremyorsky in the Donetsk area has been freed, she posted on Telegram. Currently, our defenders are engaged in efforts to rid themselves of Russian forces. Both pro-Russian blogs and Western military think tanks acknowledged the development. Ukrainian troops managed to infiltrate and drive through tactically difficult defensive positions, said the Institute for the Study of War, a U.S. think tank. Reports indicate that Ukraine may be utilizing fresh and generally more experienced battalions. They seem to have gotten past some strategically placed Russian defences. These activities are more likely the beginning of a main thrust that Ukrainian troops may be undertaking than they are the culmination of one. Gains are expected to take place gradually, with lulls and grinding efforts intermingled. Yesterday, there were little details on the advance, so it's not known if there were significant losses on either side. It was believed that Russian ordnance, which had been placed in ahead of Ukraine's advance, would obstruct such advancement. Before armoured vehicles can move forward, these minefields must be cleared manually, frequently while being attacked. Ukraine's counter-offensive has three axes. East towards Bakhmut, a city devastated by conflict. South through Vulida. And south towards Tokmak. The southern axis includes the advance that is close to Robotine.
Recent weeks have seen fierce fighting at many locations along the 600-mile front line as Ukraine launches a counteroffensive against Russian forces that invaded 17 months earlier with weaponry and personnel trained in the West. Putin lauded the heroism with which Russian soldiers were fending off attacks in the southeast Zaporizhia area, claiming Moscow's soldiers had not only damaged Ukraine's military hardware but also severely wounded Kyiv's forces. He demanded state TV. Although it was unable to independently confirm his report, Ukraine's effort in the region wasn't successful. Putin attended an African leaders' conference in St. Petersburg. Since beginning a counteroffensive in early June, Ukrainian soldiers have only gradually advanced till today's decisive win. Putin has consistently said without providing proof that Ukraine has sustained significant losses. According to a Western diplomat who was not permitted to publicly speak on the topic, Ukraine has recently deployed hundreds of troops to the area. To impede Ukrainian advances, the Russian army has planted extensive minefields. It has also attacked Ukrainian armor and artillery with combat planes and loitering bombs. The counteroffensive's operational specifics have been kept a secret by the Ukrainian government, and little information about its development has been made public. Hanna Malia the Deputy Minister of Defense stated on Wednesday that soldiers are moving closer to Melitopol, a city in the Zaporizhia region. A big victory for Ukraine, which seeks to cut through the land corridor between Russia and the Crimean Peninsula, which Moscow unlawfully invaded in 2014, would be the capture of Melitopol near the Sea of Azov. That may divide the Russian army in half and cut off supplies to the westward moving battalions. Currently, Russia is in charge of the whole Sea of Azov shore. If Ukrainian forces had captured Russian Staromyorsky, it may be possible for them to advance southward towards the shore. U.S. cluster bombs are being used by Ukrainian soldiers, and they are being launched from 155mm heavy cannons. Bloggers claim that the effort to free Staromyorsky got underway early on Wednesday in a forest two Robotines northeast. The initial line of Russian defences was breached by the soldiers of Kiev but they were held up by minefields. In order to take advantage of the victories, Ukraine is expected to send troops to the region. According to reports, the Ukrainian forces are employing strategies they have acquired from extensive training sessions monitored by NATO troops, notably British personnel. Following the Kremlin's removal of Major General Ivan Popov as the in charge of that section of the front line, Kiev troops have turned their attention north of Robotine. After opposing the military and equipment deployment, he was fired. The Ukrainian offensive followed military and political unrest in Russia in June during which warlord Yevgeny Prigozhin, the leader of the Wagner private mercenary organization, staged a brief uprising that presented the greatest challenge to Putin in his 23-year rule. The mercenaries have left the Ukrainian battlefield, where they were crucial to the capture of Bakhmut after the longest combat of the conflict. According to reports, 
Thousands of Wagner soldiers have relocated to Belarus to aid in the preparation of its soldiers for deployment to Africa. According to the National Resistance Center of Ukraine, new Wagner mercenary recruits are informed when they sign contracts that they must consent to fight inside NATO nations Poland and Lithuania. During a trip to Papua New Guinea, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin stated that Kyiv's attempt to recapture territory that Russia had taken since its full-scale invasion in February 2022 would be difficult and lengthy, with both victories and defeats. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken acknowledged the existence of an intense battle, but he withheld further information. The tools, the gear, the training, and the advice that many of us have given the Ukrainians over a long period of time, according to Blinken, put them in a good position to be successful on the ground in recovering more of the territory that Russia has taken from Ukraine. In the meanwhile, the latest attack since Moscow terminated a grain export deal killed one civilian and seriously damaged the port infrastructure in the southern Ukrainian province of Odessa, according to Governor Ola Kuyper. He said that the assault made use of caliber cruise missiles fired from the Black Sea. The Air Force of Ukraine claimed to have shot down 36 Russian missiles fired from T-95MS strategic bombers.